Hello, welcome back to the Irish Tennis Updates podcast. My name's Adam and I'm your host. This week I've got a really special episode with the founder of the Getty Grip Tennis Academy based in David Lloyd Riverview, Isis Slagis. Isis grew up in Lithuania, won the National Senior Championships aged 15, represented his country in Davis Cup and was the captain of the Fed Cup team before moving to Ireland over 10 years ago. And he's now one of the top coaches in the country. His story is fascinating. His attitude and outlook on life and performance is inspirational. And I think we can all take a lot from this episode. But before we get into it, just a couple of things to say. Firstly, during the week, Peter Bothwell announced his intention to retire from the pro game. I want to commend Peter for everything he's achieved in his career and all he's done to inspire people around the country. I think we'll all agree that Peter's title run uh, at the 2018 Irish Open in Carrick Mines is one of the highlights in Irish tennis of recent years. I'd like to wish Peter the very best for the next stage of his life. And secondly, this is episode 20 of the podcast. I've had a brand new episode out every week for the last 11 weeks. I've really enjoyed and I felt privileged to be able to speak to so many amazing people over the last few months. And I really hope that people have got something from these podcasts as well. If you missed any of the episodes so far, I'd encourage you to go back and check them out. You can do that wherever you're listening to this episode right now. So thank you. I'm going to call this Series 1 and take a number of weeks off. I'll be back in a few weeks with Series 2 with loads more interviews, so I'm really looking forward to that. Make sure you subscribe to the show and follow me on Twitter at TennisUpdateIRE so you don't miss Series 2. Thank you. And without further ado, here is Istis. Yeah, so Oysters, first of all, just thanks very much for, for talking to me today, coming on the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure um, to, to talk to you and uh, see what I can uh, give to, you, to, to the Irish Tennis uh, podcast. Great, looking forward to it. Thanks very much. Uh, so f- first of all, just how are you? How, how's, how's, how's life for you at the moment? How are you getting on? Yeah, all is good. We're back to coaching. Uh, we went back uh, the minute we were allowed. Uh, yeah. We are outdoors. We're not in the club that we normally are in. Okay. We had to rent some courts outdoors. Um, uh, but look, I mean, we're, we're, we keep moving. We keep going. You know, kids are playing not as much. But uh, I can tell you, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, the, the, these times have has shown me a lot in relation to how much coaching you really need, even at the performance level, I think. Okay. You know, it's interesting. It's great to be, to be getting back and things will be getting back more and more, I guess, over the, the weeks to come. Um, yeah, but, I think yeah. next next Monday is going to be uh, it's going to be a, a little bit more even normality. Yeah. Uh, so we're just growing every week, uh, back growing back uh, to, to to norms. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, I just want to get into your your kind of journey, your story in tennis. So just to go back to the start, um, where did yes you get into tennis? How, how did that happen? So um, I was I was living in the in, in the city center of uh, capital of Lithuania, Vilnius, and uh, my mom used to play. Back then, tennis was a very, very small uh, sport. But we had these absolutely amazing tennis courts, which are still existing in the, in the, in the UNESCO Heritage Park in, in the capital uh, center. Okay. And yeah, we would just walk with the grandmother, just walk in and watch people play. And, you know, that, that watch people play for one summer became trying out for, you know, at, at the age of eight, I started playing two, three times a week. Um, and it just continuously went until the age of 11, um, just playing three times a week. Uh, and then, you know, the first competitions kick in. That's where you really sort of uh, tease yourself out. Um, I, I got maybe, I, 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 I ended up fourth in under 12 Lithuanian championships in, in winter championships. And then suddenly you start thinking, oh, maybe we should do more. Um, and a young, back then, young coach approached me. He said, look, we, we, can, we can try and practice a little bit more. Uh, then we, I switched the coach. I worked with him for two more years. Uh, I just kept kept being in the top three, four in the country, and and then and then another coaching team came along, and that was my last uh, switch, which then moved me into uh, six times a week and and, and proper coaching, uh, which then the journey just 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 went on until the age of eighteen, nineteen, and that's when I started coaching. So this is my little uh, storyline timeline of of my tennis. Uh, um, of my tennis uh, history. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So was there someone you kind of looked up to when you were growing up early on in, in the game of tennis? Was there someone you, you looked up to? Uh, probably, the, the, you know, once uh, Lithuania was, as you know, um, you know, she was, it, it was part of Soviet Union. 
until 1991. So for the first 10 years, uh, we didn't see much. You know, there was not much okay. tennis on the telly. It was all uh, curtains. And, and then it, more or less 1994, when I was 13, 14, uh, the satellite television came in. We started looking on the, on, the, on the telly and my inspiration was Michael Chang. I know that not okay. many people would follow him. Uh, but he was he was the guy that I really looked up uh, uh, to uh, to just try to see every match and and, and try to learn um, as well. Adam, you know, back then the coaching was not the same. You know, there was no internet. The coaches didn't know as much as they know now. So a lot mm-hmm. of things had to be learned just watching and, and trying yourself. And this is this is one thing that I think our generation was uh, was good at is just seeing and repeating and trying and practice walls and playing with each other. It was less structured coaching uh, than there is now. So, so yeah, Michael Chang was my first inspiration and mm. he was continuously on. And then a little bit of Andre Agassi and uh, um, uh, came in, which I think I, I, lear- I just learned watching from him how, how people like me, small people, can, uh, can, can, can play tennis efficiently. So these would be the two people that I, I, I tried to learn from while yeah. watching uh, them on the TV. Yeah, very good. Um, yeah, so just to get in a bit then to your, your, your journey a bit more. So you mentioned you were, yeah. you know, you got to play more and more as you were getting uh, to 18, 19. You're doing well in, uh, in, in, the, yeah. in the competitions. You, were, you had, had a good ranking. So then when, when you kind of finished up at school, did, did, did you go to, to some pro tennis pretty straight away? Was that kind of your, your route? No, my route, my, I, I was never a, a full, full-time player. Like, like now, you know, people are, are, are pursuing this completely full-time. Mm. Um, you know, lucky, luckily for me, my uh, national success came quite early. I was 15 and a half when I won the senior championships with two top players uh, being in Germany at that time. And then, okay. and then at, at that age, I, I, I instantly made the Davis Cup team. You mentioned yes. there you you were uh, you played Davis Cup at, at 15. You said so. How was that experience playing so young? And how many years did you then play Davis Cup for? So I was on the team for four consecutive years. Some years I was I was a, an active player, which you you're number one or two when you play mm-hmm. on the team. That was for two two years, and then the other two years I was on the panel. I was number three in the uh, on the team, and I would some you know the way it works in in mm-hmm. Davis Cup where the A team format, you play some matches and you sit out some matches. And then uh, some some ties that were three day tie, which was in Euro Africa Group Zone Two. You know, I was I was number three, but I didn't get to play that year. Um, you know, and and but it was Davis Cup for me is 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 something incredible. I mean, if it's it's rep- representing your country, I think it's the pinnacle of for me personally. It's 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 something you can really. Uh, it's the top achievement that you can uh, that you can reach, um, and for me that 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 inspired me to uh, to continuously uh, just just keep playing and even coaching. Um, so so Davis Cup, I mean, it was immense. Now I was pretty young, and when you start playing, um, uh, you know, former ITF uh, men's circuit players out there, it's like completely a, a little shock uh, to your system, especially the first year. I wasn't even 16, and I was playing every day singles and doubles and it was mm. it was a shock but i, I it, it, it's 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 still a, a memory that i would not delete it's it's, it's absolutely amazing to play davis yeah. cup and to represent yeah. your country you know about davis cup i i know a few years ago um the irish team played played the lithuanian team were you involved in any capacity in that or were you you, you were in ireland at that point well it's a it's a funny story um i was because i'm yeah, I was involved, and it was I think in 2010, if I remember right, it was in Fitzwilliam, mm. and we had a, a a super solid team back then, and the team was on the high because they just beat Great Britain. Yeah, uh, there was uh, there was a a, a lot of um, media behind. There was a lot of sort of a wave with with the fans, and we we as a local community, Lithuanian community, we actually coordinated the spectators for the crowds. I think that was when we actually, that was the Davis Cup we made Lithuanians feel at home because we had around 200 people in the stands screaming and shouting, proper Davis Cup mm. environment from what we managed. So I was involved as a, as a coordinator for the crowd for the Lithuanian community. Now, sorry, <laughs> I wasn't uh, uh, supporting the Irish team, but the blood <laughs> is the blood. I know, yeah, no, it's, it's interesting that I guess you had a bit of a conflict almost. For, uh, just, just before we get into the yes. stuff in Ireland, I want to bring you back to um, yeah. your time with, with the Fed Cup team in, in Lithuania. So I know you had a oh, time, yes. time working with them. So how was, how was that experience to work with, obviously, the, the very top level within, within the country? 
Um, you see, I was I was an assistant coach to the top uh, lady in Lithuania um, uh, already. Um, um, I was I was I was uh, um, I was helping. Her dad was the main person that was driving her around the Europe, and I was I was involved in their training uh, schedules and 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 training um, um, day in day out. And um, she was back then uh, two twenty in the world, and I was involved massively with her. So I think. Uh, you know, uh, when Federation was deciding who would be the captain, you know, there was uh, a bit of a favor in front in, in, in front of me because mm -hmm. I, I knew the, the person, I knew how to deal with with uh, with her, and we had a great relationship, and other players uh, were happy, and the Federation was happy, and it was look, I mean, Fed Cup, uh, it's it's again for me representing your own country, whether as a player or as a captain of the team, is something that that is beyond description. I think words can describe how. How proud I am to have this on my uh, in my history of, of yeah. my uh, career. Um, this is incredible, and you know, one year we were um, that was this, the first year we were in the in the third group of Euro Africa, and that was the the team format. Uh, we just narrowly missed on the promotion, and then um, uh, the next year, um, you know, we get promoted, and then we went to the first league to the first group, Euro Africa group, with where the sixteen teams, and you know, the players like. Back then, um, Patty Schneider and Azarenka, and um, there were there were players of uh, that caliber coming in. There was a Bulgarian player, Pironkova, who was for years in a top hundred, and sitting on the bench watching the way these players train and communicate, and the coaches of them, and and the professional team surrounding. I mean, it's just learning every single minute. Um, that was that was yeah. That that taught me a lot. I think that those experiences taught me much more than any any uh any course mm. that I, I attended absolutely so i guess that having that exposure to the real the, the real top uh section of of the game it, it does, and, and that really that really stood to you you think you, you learned a lot from that that you've you've brought you know stayed with you and you, you use in, in your coaching life uh, still today do you reckon absolutely i i have to say that um a lot of my um a lot of my values came from a couple of people in my lifetime Coaching values came from a couple of people in the lifetime that I had, which I was again quite lucky. Um, um, uh, there was a uh, my when I was playing, there was a physio um, who was a former um, Soviet uh, Union head physio for many years, okay. and this and the standards and the standards and that he was she was looking after recovery of my body after my preparation of my body for uh, for 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 um, training and from competition. And the ideas he back then said, and the, the way the values, the way he was bringing his life and he was installing them into me were, were actually taught me uh, a lot. Uh, and then the, the, the other person that, that really taught me a lot was uh, the, actually the father of, of that girl, number one Lithuanian player who was uh, in the top 250 for many years. And he was a former um, uh, 300 meters steep, steeplechase runner, a former pro athlete. Okay. Uh, and 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 just just being around those people, the way they bring themselves around, the standards they set, and the way they see shape you into performance mindset. Uh, and then you can really and you really understand that you know performance mindset is is general across the board. It's not a it's not something just for tennis or just for running or just for uh, for any other skill in life. I think there there are certain values that that they were installed in me early in my playing career and in my coaching career, and I was lucky enough to be shaped like that by those people. And when you're day in day out around people like this, you just you you know you just start thinking like them. So again, a bit of luck, I think, from having people the environment around me for many years was very professional. So it was just was great luck. Well, you know, I think it's really interesting you say that because now to move back to, to your time in Ireland and your time in Riverview, um, you've been there yes. I think, 11 years now. And I think you have, you know, you've, you've, you've been able to do that yourself, you know, create that environment for, you know, producing players. And it's a really great environment for people to, to train and, and work in. So I think you've, you've brought that here as well, which is, which is really great. I hope so. I hope so. I think it's the question that I always say the players have to answer. It's not me. Because mm. I, do, I do my best, but it's the players that have to be my critics and say if you know if if we've achieved that or not so um yeah i'll, I'll let i'll let the, the the players that i coached uh, decide on that uh, whether we i did bring that or, or or not um yeah um yeah so in riverview i know you you, you work in in, in getty grip so is that, is that a company that you have and that's kind of 
it's through that you, you're working so with the How the history the the history of 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 get a grip um Get a grip company uh, was that in back 2006 when I started working with my co-partner, we back then ran the David Lloyd tennis program um, uh, for for a year, and then the current general manager came to us and said, "Look, guys, you should uh, you should set up uh, your own uh, uh, your own facility, uh, your own company, and you should do that." So we did that in David Lloyd until 2000 and uh, uh, from 2007 to 2009, but uh, more of a program. Then we set up the, the company. Uh, but then there was a little change in the management in David Lloyd. Uh, we had to move out um, for two years. We, we operated as a Get a Grip Tennis Academy, uh, but it was in a club outdoors over Irish winters. It, you know, the standards suffer, what you can do with the players suffer. At this point in the interview, we had a couple of small technical issues, um, but we'll pick it back up. So in 2011, there was a new general manager in David Lloyd and they allowed ISTIS and Getty Grip Academy to return. So that's where we'll pick it up. So yeah, since 2011, we were back and running David Lloyd Performance Tennis Program. And mm. uh, I think, you know, that stability really gave us some, some wings to grow. And the general managers in David Lloyd were, were helpful enough to, have, uh, to, to let us create what we wanted. And uh, yeah, I have to say, you know, I'm, I'm very proud from where we started to where we came uh, with my co-partner Maurice and uh, so yes um, that's that's the history in, in, mm. in with, uh, with with David Lloyd Riverview. Yeah so when you started there what, what big ambitions did you have starting out in that role? We just we what we wanted is to create a, a performance environment where kids can train for competitive tennis. Uh, ambitions were to, uh, to, to, to really create a program that has it has the competitive mindset, not participation mindset, but the competitive mindset. And the mindset that tennis is, is played properly. Um, it's not just for fun. And it's taught properly as well, uh, based on certain standards. And, and that people can have a skill for life, tennis for life, or can benefit from, from tennis, like uh, going on to playing scholarship or going on um, or representing their country or, or eventually maybe if they want to go pro, that's, that's up to them. So that, that was the vision that we wanted. And, there, and we started small by creating um, small groups of children that had the drive and had the, the ability uh, to practice two, three times uh, a week back then with adding some private work and are willing to, to commit to competition. So the minute, the minute we, we ran the assessments every year um, and you, you get a bunch of, um, of children that are, that are interested you assess them in a couple of hours you see their physical ability you see what kind of tennis ability they have you see their ability to focus and listen and ability to compete and this is the way you select an age group and this is the way actually our program started back in 2007 we uh, we selected a, an age group uh, we back then they were all um, uh, under under nine and we called them the orange performance program of the club and and we selected um, uh, 12 children children and we worked on free courts uh, twice a week okay. all of them took a private all of them competed and we kept going we kept pushing that we kept we 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 ensured that the standards in the group are high so if anyone fell out of the radar we had to explain to the parents we either do what what the program is is as asking or if it's not for you maybe maybe you should move into a club club level and once the standards were high and everyone was on the board, I mean, parents, players, and the coaches, that, that generation was starting to play good tennis, getting some, um, some uh, good uh, results in the competition. And then the next year, you select, we selected a new age group. And that's how it all grew. And, um, and, and this, 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 uh, this was the, 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 the little circle that we used. Every year, we would select a new age group. Um, and and the older age group would stay if 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 one or two good players from other clubs wanted to join and they and, and if they matched the standard, great, we added them in. But majority of the years that we had, a lot of the players would, would the core would stay and some people would, would, would stop and some people would join. Yeah. What do you think you're most proud of and um, that you've achieved in your in your time in Ireland? 
definitely uh, the, the, the number one is, 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 the, is the structure we created. And, uh, you know, the, 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 the one of the proudest moments is when I see now is when um, the players that I mentioned to you there, the first generation in 2007, mm. are now, you know, either studying in the U.S., getting their scholarships or are still playing tennis. Uh, maintaining in tennis pl- people, I think it's one of the biggest coaches goals that you can have because it's easy to put a stress off the performance, but we forget that, you know, keeping children in the game is, is a goal itself too. And, and so I'm proud of, of a lot of, the, of that generation are actually working with us now, you know, uh, okay. you know assisting, us, assisting us as hitters or running some match play events or helping us with ITF. Um, over the last two years, we did an ITF in Tennis Europe events in David, in David Lloyd Review. And they're helping us stepping in and doing the the you know tournament super supervision. Mm-hmm. So this is this is what 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 I'm proud of is is that we keep the keep the children in the game and we we give them a good basis for life. Uh, championships come 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 next. Uh, this is not the most important thing um, for me. Uh, it's it's great to be associated with the champion, uh, junior champion, senior champion, but. I think I think I'm more proud of the structure that we have, and that a lot of kids are staying in the game, and a lot of kids are using tennis as a as a great platform for their uh, life. Um, so, who do you think is is the most talented player, or if there's a couple you'd have uh, that you've ever worked with in, in your time coaching? I I I honestly believe that talent is highly highly overrated, and I know it sounds a little bit cheesy, but uh, I'll explain why. Number one is from all the players I had is they were all talented in different um, uh, or I coached. Uh, uh, they all were talented in certain uh, areas. Some of them were talented in physical ability. Some of them were talented in technical, tactical abilities. Uh, some of them were talented with uh, mental abilities, you know, the discipline and work ethic. Mm-hmm. And probably, you know, if you're talented in one area, you might not have that, that level of talent in the other area. Uh, but but as long as you're willing to compensate with your strengths and to override your weaknesses, I think you know that's that's as as good as it can get. So I wouldn't I wouldn't I will will not give you names, Adam. Um, it yeah. would not be fair to put a list of players of the talent. Now, when if we go to hard work, that's I think where I can give you names, you know, mm-hmm. as an examples. But talent, I think it's uh, it's only a, a part of the success story. The rest is a daily grind. You know, it's, it's about making those little polished elements a little bit better than yesterday. And that's where the success stories came from. Uh, I, I, yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's really interesting that it, it is more about the, the hard work. So if you move on to the hard, the hard workers, who, who would you look at um, from that point of view? I mean, by, by no doubt, uh, if anyone uh, saw Jenny Claffey, training uh when she was on the women's tour uh it's it's exceptional i'm i mean it's it's just it's i i haven't seen anyone working that hard with uh, applying itself 24 7 with the highest with the highest discipline with the highest intensity with the highest focus uh with the highest attention to detail um it's it's it was incredible to work with her i have to say um so by 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 far she was the person that that definitely uh, is 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 a uh, is a probably an example to everyone if anyone can can have has had seen or could have seen uh, Jenny training somewhere and can memorize that I would say you know if you can reach that level you'll achieve anything anywhere in your life. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah. So just to to keep, stick with kind of you your story your journey a little bit. Um, yes. What, what, what are you kind of looking for for the future? What are your goals for the future? Or what are you kind of excited about um, going forward? Uh, it's a great question. Um, I didn't prepare for that one. <laughs> but I think, uh, you see, my philosophy uh, in general, personal philosophies, I just want to be, I want to give the best I can give uh, to the players that I have um, on, the, on the current situation. Um, and, and to... to um, so number one is to give my best, and number two is to do a little bit better than I did yesterday. Um, and and if I can provide that, I think that's the way the growth goes. I I often uh, uh, get asked by my dad in the past now, 
he used to ask, oh, so what's your three year plan? And I like, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know where I'm going to be uh, three years down the line. I think in current uh, world, you can be anywhere in, 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 in three or four months, you can be working completely different uh, locations and doing different things and working on a different field. So my aspirations is just to wake up tomorrow and do a little bit better than I did today. Um, and and, and to, to create and to build brick by brick, the program that we have uh, is to, to, to make it a little bit better. Well, that's fascinating. I think it's a really good thing for people to hear just that, that attitude that you bring that is, is really, really great. Um, so it's a, it's a great answer. I, yeah, I just, I'm just not a, I, like, I, I, I can tell you what I dream of, but that's not the way my life will go for sure because mm. dreams are dreams. But I think it's the little work steps that matter more uh, than what you dream of. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's well said. Um, yeah, to move on a bit to um, a few, few more questions. Um, just You've obviously been here in Ireland for um, about 11 years or so now coaching. Um, so what do you think about Irish yeah. tennis and yes. how, it, how it looks into, into the future? What do you think needs to be done maybe to, to keep going in the right direction? Uh, oh, okay. Well, it's, 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 it's difficult to, to answer that question in brief. Uh, and I'll answer it only from my personal perspective. Um, but um, I do believe strongly that in, if we talk about player development from, from, from the field that I'm in, from a performance element, I really strongly believe that um, creating a, a, an academy um, circuit uh, supported by the federation or by the government is, is, is vital, is the, is the only way to go forward if we want to have the next player. Um, I, I, I'm, I, I appreciate the, and, I, and I really like um, and I learned a lot from the club system that Ireland has, but I strongly believe that this is not the way you prepare players um, because I believe that you know, clubs are absolutely amazing in, in keeping the numbers high and keeping children in the game and introducing it to the game. And being part of the community, which is, I think, it's 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 definitely a bottom part of the of the pyramid of of players in in in, in tennis. But I really think that we we could create something more performance oriented facilities and academies that uh, that will help to 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 get back the players into top two hundred and top two one fifty. Um, you know, with the structures uh, and the competition. I think that's that's the only way. So I'm really hoping that eight years down the line, uh, you know, that something like this will will be just a history. Um, so mm. yes, Adam, that would be my 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 mm. main vision in relation to where I would like for in my personal field in the performance element of tennis, Irish tennis to go forward. Yeah. Um. How does um tennis in Ireland compare to tennis in Lithuania at the high levels? Are there any big differences or similarities you see? I would say I would I, I wouldn't point out many differences. Uh, Lithuania at this moment uh, are lucky enough to have a, a person in the top hundred, but he's mm. unique. He's not a uh, he's not a person that created uh, that that was uh, uh, he was just very talented and with dedication with his coaches back then, um, um, and with a lot of hard work um, um, and with help with private people. They managed to to get on the top of the world uh, in juniors, uh, and then Richard, Ricardo Zbarankis, if you know, mm, yeah, uh, yeah. he's he's top he's top seventy five in the world now, and he he still continues to there. So it's great for Lithuanian tennis to keep that 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 uh, limelight on him. But I think in relation to structures, and there are differences, but not not major differences that I would point out. Um, I think in Lithuania a lot of a lot of the folk, it's the market is big in recreational tennis and amateurs, so a lot okay. of competition is happening, and definitely the people that are keen on on, on pursuing the high performance, they have more facilities to uh, indoor good quality facilities to uh, to, uh, to 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 train it because lately uh, there has been a lot of uh, built of private little ventures there mm. that have indoor facilities. So this is this is great, but in relation to uh, to structures. I think both countries are in the same position. Okay. They can create better, um, better approach national strategies, how to develop players, um, you know, or what to do with the players if they have some, uh, some, some potential. Uh, so I think there's commonalities and there's differences in mm. relation to differences more so in facilities 
and maybe the 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 the, the, the people that are in, involved in tennis but similarities in that the, the next steps are quite similar small mm. nations have to work together yeah. they cannot they cannot be on separate uh, uh, you know um, uh, mindsets so yeah. you know you mentioned um, Barankis there i guess it's great for yeah. you know Lithuania to have a a player that obviously has reached such high heights like a, a big role model that you know kids can look up to yes. as they they progress through you know it's something that we haven't had someone in Ireland obviously break the top 100 in, in a long time and you feel that it would be a great you know to have yes. a great step to have someone so I guess you do have that in Lithuania which is which is a big plus yes yes it is a big plus uh, but you, you you must have someone continuously uh, you need to have number two and number three or promising juniors to be yeah. knocking on those doors eventually because uh, uh, Ricardo is obviously he, he will continuously hopefully play and uh, I pray his, for his health that it will mm. he will be okay and he will keep inspiring the young generation but you need the next wave uh, of players to come through um, Absolutely. because uh, if, if, he, if, if, you know, if one day he was to stop you know, and there was no one else to inspire. The numbers on the performance element will uh, will 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 change. And I don't think this is just to do with Lithuania. You know, the Germany uh, tennis story with Boris Becker and Steffi Graf, or or any other country, or or Icelandic soccer, probably. You know, it's 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 those those stories that uh, that uh, that that show us that you you know you have to have someone at the top in order to inspire the next yeah. generation to to achieve the same, to believe and to work hard enough to achieve the same. Uh, so, so yeah, it's it's unfortunate that performance in in any performance field, you have to have someone performing for you to keep going at it, mm. uh, to have that belief. Yeah, uh, a few more questions, Oistis. Just um, really appreciate your time and uh, get getting your your thoughts. Um, well, what's what's your favorite thing about coaching? Your favorite thing about coaching tennis? Oh, the, the most favorite thing about uh, coaching tennis that you can really, you know, in in. in inspire neck you know children to grow into into the values that you believe in you know and i for me helping helping children to to have the first of all the performance mindset you know shaping them up uh, and think think in the right um, in, you know in, in the mindset of i have to get better i have to perform i have to perform at my best ability and really um affecting the next generation to be the best human beings i think that's for me is the most inspiring um, so this is what I, I like about the coaching the most is that you wake up every day and you can make the difference in someone else. And I think our, our job is, is really helping to do that. So this is for me is the most inspiring thing. Mm, that's, that's a really good answer as well. Um, do, do you have a, a best memory from tennis, either from, from playing, from coaching, any step, a, a best memory that you have? Um, one of the, the, one of the biggest um, uh, memories would be probably becoming the, the senior champion at the age of 15 and a half. Mm. Um, and as I said, you know, two top players didn't play, but uh, you, when you win the senior championship at, at 15 and a half, it's like you will remember that for the life. A yeah. couple of, uh, of, 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 of uh, occasions in the Davis Cup, you know, one of them was when we were in Macedonia playing an A-team um, format and uh, you know in the, in the group of four we 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 we, um, we have to play macedon in the last group match and it's one all after singles and it's a center court 400 people watching you know in in in, in southern europe you have people all are hitting a return it's a real sort of a yeah it's challenging conditions we're six three five two down and it's deciding doubles and we managed to come back and, uh, you know, you win. And we won that match and we were playing for promotion the next day. And this is something that, that just shapes you as a, as a person as well. Because, you know, you're, you're in a country with a crowd behind you. You're completely behind. You're a few points away from losing. And you come back. And, yeah, it's, it's these moments definitely um, just define you as a, as a person and stay for you with, uh, in life. So that, that would be uh, from a playing uh, career these would be the, 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 the moments that I, um, that I remembered the most. And uh, mm. from a coaching uh, point of view, what, what, I, what I remember the most is, is, is really when your players perform at their best. You know, you just feel like you've done something right. Uh, uh, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of matches where you feel like you're just, just, just enjoying the spectacle in front of you. Um, so, but it doesn't happen often, but when it happens, it's rewarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, 
just to, before we finish up to get a bit of, a bit of your, your advice for, for first of all for, for players what, what advice would you give to, to junior players out there um, so the, the, my biggest my biggest uh, um, advice would be is put in the, 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 the work yourselves um, a lot of the a lot of the current generation I find are relying on the coach to to give some sort of a magic box or just some magic tool or some magic drill that mm. suddenly will make them better uh, in my opinion you know this is one thing that players can do is is go out and practice themselves and be much more proactive in trying to to analyze their game and be responsible of their development uh, you know we as coaches i'll give an example of one former itf expert has said to uh, to a team of eastern european coaches when there was a little workshop there he said you know coaches you know on back then it was 20 years ago he said uh, the best paid coaches in the world back then he says get around on average 10 to 12 percent of the prize money of the player and that's he says that's the best coaches he says, this is exactly what you're worth uh, to a player. The rest is up to the player to, to do. Mm. So my biggest message to the players is you've got to put in the work yourself. Uh, you've got to ask the questions to the coach. Uh, you've got you to keep, keep thinking and analyzing your game and really find a lot of answers yourself. Uh, it's not it's not going to come out in a in a great package from DHL or any other company. Yeah. Uh, you have to you have to work out a lot of things yourself. So that would be my biggest message to the to the players out there that are trying to achieve um, you know the national top or or international level or even go to college tennis if mm. they uh, want to go to states. Yeah, some some great advice. Um, and to go on to to parents, maybe like how do you think the the relationship works with or how do you think of some advice for parents um you know how they work with with the coach with with the with the, the kids um what, what do you yes. think that, that should look like well uh, i think again it's 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 a it's a common pattern in the in, in in our developed world lately is that again we're trying as parents and i'm a parent of two boys a lot of the times we're trying to give everything on the plate to the children uh you know and we're not allowing them to fail so number one my advice would be uh you have to let them lose you have to let them fail uh and then you, you just have to be there to support them to to grow out of those failures you know we, we got to throw them out there and let them experience failures and and help them to, to learn from those failures but if we don't if we don't teach them to fail and if we don't help them to deal with them we're not uh, making them uh, more resilient and more analytical about themselves and about their game we're not helping them to learn we're actually stopping them from learning and number two advice is, uh, is is definitely believe much more in the coach you know if you chose the coach you have to believe the success of the players that i had uh, uh, like uh, the players that i worked uh, in the last couple of years that had the top national success in ireland and had some international success um, at, at a let's call it medium level um, is is the players parents any question they would call me directly I never had a, a criticizing uh, text message or anything like that. They might inquire, they might ask, but you know, whatever decision I took, they were fully behind me. Was it right or wrong? Doesn't matter. But I feel like there's lately a lot of disbelief. Uh, parents are looking for again that mastery secret. If I go to that coach, and then two weeks later I'll go to that coach, and then three weeks later I'll go to that coach, something miraculous is going to happen. Then the kid is lost because they don't know what advice to follow. So my advice is, is if you chose the coach, you've got to fully believe in that coach and whatever they say. And if you lost belief, change completely, Ch change to a new coach. But don't have three, four coaches trying to go from one venue to another venue mm -hmm. because I, I think that, that, that kids' confidence are affected even more. So these would be my, my two uh, main tips uh, that, I would, that, I would, um, that I would suggest to the parents. Yeah. Absolutely, it's 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 again, it's some, some some really good good advice. I think um, if if you could change one thing about tennis, maybe a rule or or something in tennis, what what do you think you'd pick? Team tennis, definitely. I would. I I hope that one day uh, we're gonna have much more international approaches to uh, to to team tennis. I think the success of the Labour Cup and the uh, I played myself in leagues and I've seen 
um, as a coach, I've seen leagues in Germany and uh, and I've seen leagues in in Holland and 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 the the, the I, I really think that that team tennis should become a little bit more of a part of a, of, of a competitive tennis. I really think this is one uh, area where tennis is, is losing to other sports. It's, it's, it's too orientated about one person or one superstar mm. and it's not dispersed uh, equally. So I really hope there's going to be some formats eventually that will go worldwide, that, that will create this, this, this vibe that, that, that you're a team. Because when you're a part of the team and you're a supporter of that team, you know, it just creates a different motivational. Um, absolutely. Is team tennis something you'd like to see more of, like domestically here in Ireland as well as as kind of on the world stage? Is that something you think that could could add to tennis in Ireland having more leagues or more more team events going on? I th- I think there's a lot going on in the in the club level and in the sort of the amateur um, uh, level, but uh, I think there's very little. Um, Focus on the on the on the pro league. Uh, it would be great to have certain amount of clubs, um, you know, even getting players from abroad for a small period of time in a year and a window of, of year that uh, players can 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 compete and uh, uh, just like other other countries in the world do, uh, uh, you know, pro players go and play those leagues. Um, uh, one of my players went there last year to play for the German club and he was on the second team, but for the first team. You know, Ramos Vinoas or or Philip Kohlschreiber playing. Hopefully, hopefully we don't have to get that caliber of players. But even getting um, you know twenty four to thirty two players playing league for clubs uh, that are ATP ranked, um, that would be something that would be great for you know the young generation, the upcoming generation, and the players that are um, out of their options uh, to practice here in Ireland because. Once you reach 17, 18, if you are on the uh, footstep of ITF men's circuit um, or doing well in the ITF junior circuit, you don't really have much competition internally. So it would be great that, that there's some initiative that could, could bring this into Ireland. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I think it'd be great to see something like that happening. It, was, it would be, be really fantastic. Um, so just a final question. Um, what's your favorite thing about tennis? What's my favorite thing about tennis? Mm. Ah, great, great question, Adam. Um, never thought about this. You know, you just, uh, I just enjoy being on the tennis court. And personally, I just enjoy uh, being on the tennis court and hitting that ball and clearing your mind. You know, it's for me, tennis is, is, is a, some sort of a meditation. You know, the minute you're on the court and you start striking that ball, you know, your mind is, 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 is clearing out, you know, um, how many maybe and something puts you off. And then I start working and you start seeing that ball being hit and this is it. You know, the, you know all the issues go away. So, so yeah, for me, that, that's just the, the, the mental aspect of the tennis that it really makes you think right and be positive. And, and just for me, it, it, it's, it's the mental aspect of the game that I love the most about tennis. And, and then I would say... Second thing that I love about tennis is that, in my opinion, tennis is the best sport for personal development. Um, the the skills that um, the skills the skills that people create, especially if they're choosing to do competitive tennis, are 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 amazing. You know, like if you talk about dealing with pressure, um, you know, or or um, time management, or body control issues, or um, or um, or even preparation issues. I think tennis, uh, tennis really teaches that well because you don't have a coach. So you really, you know, if you are doing competitive tennis, it really equips you for, for, um, for, for life. And then it teaches great mental skills, you know, like emotional control and, and never to give up. And, and I think this is one thing that I really like is that, that, that's, that it really shapes you as a person as well. So these are the two things that I like the most about tennis, Adam. Absolutely. That's a great answer. It's really good. Um, really good answer so i think um i just will leave it there i'm sure we could talk for a long time um definitely it's, 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 it's yeah. really it's really great to talk to you um well thank thank you adam i hope you will uh, you will get something uh, out of this and you will feel because you've done a uh, quite a few and hopefully that will help your listeners to uh to maybe take a message or two and you know if everyone takes one message i'll be uh i'll be blessed
absolutely i'm sure they will so yeah just just a big thank you again for for your time i just um really appreciate it it's a pleasure and 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 thank you for doing this thank you a big thank you once again to Istus for his time and his, his really good attitudes and, out and insights. I think it's a really great um, listen. I hope you enjoyed this episode and managed to take something away from it. Many thanks for listening. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe, leave a review or a comment and share the podcast. You can tell a friend that you think might be interested as well. Uh, it really helps to spread the word. So a big thank you in advance for that. Until next time, I've been Adam. Goodbye.